want to talk today about a biblical response to the coronavirus called, called COVID-19. Um, a lot of confusion out there, a lot of people, you know, with conspiracy theories and thoughts and these evil people are doing that, these evil people are doing this. You know, all that Satan did against Job, I don't recall him saying, this evil Satan did this, this evil Satan did that, um, or these evil raiders came and did this. What he said was, Yahweh gave, Yahweh take away, blessed be the name of Yahweh, right? He knew who was in control, okay? So please, don't, don't get all caught up in the whole conspiracy and they're doing this on that. All these, I've been around this faith a long time, three decades. I've seen so many conspiracy theories, and every single one of them has been false. 100% failure rate. Okay, don't listen to them, people. They are sowing fear. They are probably fearful people themselves. Don't listen to them. They say, I have a source for this, says this. Don't listen to them. That's my advice. My, um, 49-year-old brain and spiritual experience and Neil's too. Don't listen to those videos, you know, the government's doing this or Bill Gates did this or whatever. They say, I have a well-placed source uh, that says this. What's your well-placed source? I can't tell you. Well, why not? Well, maybe because it's a YouTube video or maybe it's because it's, you know, whatever. I don't care what your, place, your source is. My source is Yahweh my Father in Heaven. That's where I get my information, and I happen to know what He's in control. And so there's no Rockefellers or uh, any other fellers going to be able to <laughs> control anything unless Yahweh gave the green light. When, when Pilate said to Yahshua, Hey, don't you realize I got the power to crucify you? What did Yahshua say? You have no power over me unless it's given to you from above, right? So they can't do anything. They can't unless Yahweh gives the green light. So, but but what is our response? What are we supposed to be doing as believers when these kinds of things happen? Listen to more sources. I call that sorcery, by the way. A little wordplay. My source says this. My source, no. Listen to his word. What does he say? When I shut up heaven and there's no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, he commands it, right? He commands the locusts. And it turns out right now, the breeding colonies of locusts that, that are breeding right now, is they're saying is unprecedented, and it's going to be the most gigantuan uh, locust uh, devouring uh, colony that they have seen in I don't know how long. Okay, And that's from just direct observation. This is not a conspiracy. This is, look at the locusts. Okay? And it's all over the news. Weather Channel, look that one up. And it's going to affect the Middle East. It's going to affect Africa, all the way to Pakistan, this swarm. Which they're saying has the capability of consuming enough food to feed 35,000 people a day. This locust colony, okay? So Yahweh may very well, unless we repent and do what he says in verse 14, may send the, the locusts to devour the land in addition to this pestilence among the people. Okay? Yahweh is the one sending coronavirus. It's a judgment. The word pestilence is, you know, sicknesses in one place. It says uh, the pestilence goes before him and the fever is what's, what's coming after. So, so it's like he did it because of wickedness in the earth. And it says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now he's talking in response to Solomon's request that when 
calamity comes upon Israel for disobedience, that he will have mercy upon them, and they will pray toward the temple, and they will repent, and he will hear from heaven. He says, okay, well, when I do this, you humble yourself, you pray, you seek my face, turn from your wicked way, and I will hear from heaven, I'll forgive your sin, I'll hear your land. Promise. And so he gave us direct instructions on what to do. This is what we're supposed to do. A lot of people out there praying. You know, the whole um, thing that happened about a week ago, Trump called for a national day of prayer. And too often, what a national day of prayer really means is, Father, you do for, you do for me. You do for me. Uh, Yahweh, save me from the coronavirus. Yahweh, have mercy upon our nation. But based on what I see in this scripture, what we really need is a national day of repentance. And look at what he says here. He will heal the land. He's sending these things because the land is defiled under its inhabitants. That's why. The whole earth is defiled under its inhabitants. In Numbers 35, 33, Yahweh says, So you shall not pollute the land where you are, for blood defiles the land. That means when innocent blood is shed, it defiles the land. So there's one thing that can defile the land. So no atonement can be made for the land, for the blood shed upon it, except by the blood of him who shed it. Except by the blood of him who shed it. Now I want you to think about the uh, coronavirus. Who are the ones that primarily are the victims, the ones that are dying in this coronavirus? It is the older generation. There's, I think, only been one child that's ever died from it. Um, so the children seem to be protected, and the older generation particularly are affected. Not saying that it's only the older generation, but that was the generation brothers and sisters, that legalized the shedding of innocent blood. In 1972, in the United States and in other nations around the world, abortion came and took the world by storm. And in the 1960s, 70s, the uh, immoral so-called sexual revolution where fornication became in vogue and the uh, wickedness of, of fornication uh, became more and more and more popular and therefore the abortion that came alongside it. And Yahweh said in uh, Leviticus 18, he said, do not defile yourself with any of, these, any of these things. He's talking about, Leviticus 18, he's talking about sexual sin. Okay? Fornications, incest, and other things. For by all these, the nations are defiled, which I'm casting out before you. For the land is defiled, therefore I visit the punishment of its iniquity upon it for the land, and the land vomits out its inhabitants. So fornication and the shedding of innocent blood that came along with it. People want, people want their fornication so badly uh, that they're willing to kill their own offspring so they wouldn't have to deal with them. And they sacrificed them on the altar of self, what self wants convenience. The third thing Yahweh says, a land is defiled therefore I poured out my fury on them for the blood which they shed in the land and for their idols which they had defiled it. And what is abortion? Abortion is self-idolatry. Right? So abortion is self-idolatry because I want what I want. I don't want to be inconvenienced or be or have to be judged for my sin so I'm going to put my my sin that I have committed, I'm going to shed the, child, the, the blood of my own child and have them killed for it. And that's what happened in the 70s, late 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. And now, and who are they attacking? I believe it's the spirit of Amalek. Amalek was willing to attack the weak and the sick, the stragglers at the back of Israelites army as they were leaving the the Egypt Amalek went behind him and attacked the weak in the in the back 
Uh, Amalek also attacked David. His wives and his children carried him off when they, the, the men were away fighting. And Amalek also left the Egyptian behind who was sick and weak, let him, left him to die. So the spirit of Amalek is you're going to attack the weak. And that's what abortion is, attacking the weak. Now, this generation, and I'm not saying every person, I'm not saying every person that has the coronavirus is guilty of abortion. Okay? I'm saying by and large, a generation is being judged. Quite, I'm not acting as a prophet. It's just my observation. I don't think it's a coincidence. It started in China. Because China is a nation that limited people's offspring to one child, and if they had any more children, they were immediately aborted. If they got pregnant with a second child, they were aborted. And sometimes the parents chose to abort any girls that might be um, in the womb, and, and they wanted boys. And so the blood, innocent blood in China is over the top. Not to mention the fact that this virus came from eating unclean animals. If they weren't eating the bats and the um, other animals that were uh, intermediate carriers, carriers and pigs and all these things, and this uh, seafood market, which was unclean to the max, um, there wouldn't be any dead people of coronavirus right now. So this is clearly, in my view, a judgment on America now and, and a nation of and the world at large. So what we got to do as, as a nation and as nations, repent. We need days of repentance. And we ourselves, as Yahweh's people, need to look at ourselves and say, is there any areas I'm guilty of sexual sin, of self-idolatry, of um, shedding of innocent blood? We're actually going to talk about that today. Is there any areas where I am guilty? We have to ask ourselves that question because oftentimes Yahweh will say, well, my people are there and I'm not going to judge that nation because my people are there. They're serving me. They're walking in my ways. There's a remnant. I'm going to spare them. So, um, but don't get all high and mighty because Scripture says Yahshua said, those 18 on, on whom the Tower of Siloam fell and killed them, do you think they are any more worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you all will all likewise perish. So we, we can't spend too long finger, you know, finger pointing at that older generation that legalized abortion because subsequent generations also wanted abortions. Okay, but that's where it really kind of started. Before that, it was against the law in a lot of nations. It was against the law. So now they're weak and they're sick. And they're helpless as a little baby was helpless inside the, the mama's womb. Now they're weak and they're sick and now it's coming back to visit them. I don't think it's just mere coincidence. It's something to seriously contemplate, pray about, see if the Father shows you the same thing. Um, because that's... You know, this is a pestilence that's just worldwide, and we have to consider whether or not there's something that we have done as nations, as people of the, of the earth, to bring this up upon ourselves. Yahweh says he will send pestilence, he will send the consuming locusts. And so it's really, really important that we take this time and do exactly what he says and as humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, turn from any wickedness that we may have within us, that he might forgive us and heal our land. So that's my thoughts on coronavirus. And there's a promise for grace to anyone who repents. There's a promise of grace. We may still have to suffer consequences for it. Just as David was forgiven for his sexual sin of idolatry, uh, he wanted him, what, his own pleasure more than he wanted to keep the word of Yahweh. He murdered a man, shed innocent blood, and he uh, took a man's wife, committed adultery, and so he paid the price. His, he paid the price. So we just have to, to remember that um, 
you know, Yahweh is serious about judging sin. He's not. I've, I've wondered for many years, how can all these nations prosper when they're shedding so much innocent blood? How can they prosper? And so happens that Italy is really affected. And uh, where, what's in Italy? Rome. And Rome, you know, uh, Spanish Inquisition, all that. I mean, there are, there's a lot of innocent blood in Iran. They've shed a lot of innocent blood. So, um, just thing to think about. I'm not acting as a prophet saying, thus saith Yahweh. I'm saying, well, look what Yahweh's already said. He's already said, when I do this, then you do that. So, we need to be doing that. And that, that is... Pray Yahweh to seek and find any wicked way in us that we might turn from it and be healed.